Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Happy Independence Day, July 4th. Hope you guys have a great day. Let's philosophize a little bit. Let's talk about counterculture. If you guys want mentoring or coaching, go check out my website at skyazrael.com. I'll put you on. We'll level up together. There's three areas of counterculture, baby boomer counterculture. So I'm going to pick a little pick on baby boomers a little bit in this video. I'm not a baby boomer. I'm Gen X. Gen X have been picking on baby boomers since we were born. That's our place. I get a little annoyed when Gen Z or millennials think that they invented this battle against the boomers. That's our thing. We started that. <laughs> so let's talk about three areas of counterculture that the baby boomers created. And I want to be a little critical, but these are things that I have liked for most of my life. So I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but you have to self-analyze, and I think it's worth it. Especially in this climate, political climate, social climate. I've noticed that these three countercultures that the baby boomers created have some similarities. Victimhood and degeneracy is the main themes that I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe there's some others that you guys can think of as we go through it. So the first one are the punks, the punk rockers. The punk rock scene was created by the baby boomers. Now my generation, Gen X, we perfected it. <laughs> the bands that I like, Bad Brains, Black Flag, those types of bands, the Misfits, whatever, those guys are all a little older than me. When I was a little boy, those bands were already out. But the punk scene really started in the summer of 69, the late 60s. And it was an alternative to the hippies. So the hippie scene, and we're going to talk about the hippies, that's the, that's the second counterculture that the baby boomers created. But let's stick with the punks at first. I think it's a little easier to talk about with England. Not that this was created in England. I don't want to start an argument of where punk rock culture was invented. But it's always been strong in England as a working class response to the elitist kind of royalty. And it was an alternative within the working class to the hippies. Because the hippies had an air of elitism. A lot of the hippies were the children of the elite that were rebelling against their own parents. Whereas many of the punks, not all, but many of the punks were working class. And this was a response to what was going, across, going on across town, the culture that existed across town. And it was a rather aggressive, raw, dirty genre, lifestyle. The music was, was loud and you wouldn't dance, you, you'd mosh. You'd slam dance is what they used to call it. None of the bands had any talent really and it wasn't about talent, it was about the message. Punk is message driven and the message is victimhood, oppression, complaining gripes and you go look at the lyrics of all the old punk songs and it's all class war politics a middle finger to society anarchy tear it down postmodern postmodernism at its best tear down the buildings tear down the statues burn the city beat people up what was that movie uh, clockwork orange little fantasy punk rock fantasy the punks loved intimidating people with their image. Piercings and tattoos and mohawks and boots and leather jackets and all that. And real, real dirty, scuzzy looking. And they did that to intimidate. To be shocking. It's funny how you'd get guys saying, oh, it's my individuality. I'm just expressing my individualism. And then you'd see ten of them all with the same mohawks and the same jackets and the same boots. <laughs> And there was a lot of degeneracy that came along with that scene. Sex, violence, drugs, absolutely lots and lots and lots and lots of drugs. 
you couldn't be a punk and be a cop or be part of the system. You had to be against the system, to be an activist. And the radical punks were joining these movements, joining Antifa, joining Sharp, Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice, uh, all these different groups that would go out and try to fight in the streets. And they were very politically active. Little activists. A bunch of little political activists. All the punks, a bunch of little political activists. The, the boomers created this. When my generation got a hold of it, we changed it a little bit. It became more about drugs and degeneracy and less about politics. Our anger was at the system, not just at one political party. But it was still very much victimhood. Punk rock is victimhood. It's a counterculture, a subgenre, a subculture based on victimhood and degeneracy. The prisons are full of punk rockers. The streets are full of punk rockers. It's the same with the hippies. The baby boomers created the hippie scene. It wasn't, ex there was no hippies in my grandparents' generation. The World War II generation, they were greasers. Th their counterculture was slightly different. They still had jobs. They weren't the tune in, turn on, drop out people. They weren't all doing tons of drugs. That was the hippies. The baby boomers created the hippies. And again, the hippie movement, just like the punk movement, was created as a response. And anytime you have a, a movement, a lifestyle, a genre that's created as a response to society, to what they feel the oppressive woes of society, this is a response. This is what we're, a rea our reaction to what we don't like. To me, that's a red flag. A red flag for victimhood, for weakness. You create who you are. A victim is created by society. A powerful man creates himself. Your neighbors, the cops, your teachers, they don't create you. The traffic lights, the rules, the Constitution doesn't create you. You create yourself. But a weakling looks at all that and feels victimized by it, oppressed by it. And the hippie movement was a reaction to society. They didn't like masculinity, so they wanted to look like women. They wanted to look feminine. They wanted to change what manhood was. We went from greasers to hippies, all within a couple years. This was the counterculture response to society. They were sick of the Archie Bunker idea and wanted to have the meathead, remember the meathead character, this long-haired, emasculated loser. A lot of their music is either liberal politicalism, uh, political liberalism, postmodernism. You don't find too many Republican, conservative, hippie bands, from the Grateful Dead to the Doors to Creedence Clearwater Revival. Maybe they're a bad example because that guy was in the military, but uh, most of them are rebellious, revolutionary, anti-government, anti-war, anti-businessman, anti-suit and tie, sometimes just anti to be anti. And there's a lot of degeneracy involved in the hippie scene. Unprotected sex. One can argue that the baby boomers single-handedly, their generation single-handedly have destroyed marriage. Why is marriage going downhill? We could blame the baby boomers. They have the highest divorce rate out of any generation. Every baby boomer that I've ever met has been divorced and married multiple times. My grandparents' generation, none of them. I don't think I've ever met anybody from the World War II generation that was divorced. <laughs> They've married for 50, 60 years, even if they hate that bitch, they still stayed married to her. The hippie movement has 
done a lot to really hurt society and they're all a bunch of radical political activists. They're very judgmental. They don't want to punish anybody who's not like them. And it's funny how they preach peace and love, but then they're the first to riot. The hippies and the punks. Screaming, let us do what we want. All we want to do is just do what we want, be left alone. But if you don't believe their politics, they will burn society down. If you don't embrace their victimhood and agree with their oppression, they'll burn society down and say it's your fault. And then we end off with hip-hop. Now, you may think that hip-hop is Gen X, but I'm old enough to remember the beginning. I started listening to rap music in 1981. All the rappers back in 1981 were my parents' age. Grandmaster Flash, Melly Mel, those guys, they're my mom's age. They're not my age. They're not my generation. They're baby boomers. Hip-hop, rap music, breakdancing, graffiti art was created in the 70s. Go watch the documentaries. My generation, when I jumped on it in 81, 82, we were second wave. You might even argue third wave. 82, it's before many of you were even born. It's funny when I listen to some little millennial try to tell me how hip hop is their generation. It's not even my generation. And I've been listening since 81. It's my parents' generation. They created it. Why? Why was hip-hop created? How did it get created? It was created as a response, as a reaction to society. And it's full of victimization and oppression, victimhood, the victimhood mentality. The hip-hopper is a victim. Conscious hip-hop, empowering hip-hop, righteous hip-hop, doesn't even get, doesn't even make it to the radio. What makes it to the radio? Degeneracy. Tear it down. Revolution. Fuck the police. It's full of drugs, anti-women, bitches and hoes. This is all the baby boomers that have done this. And my generation has embraced it. We love it. I have my walls covered in baby boomer counterculture. It's all food for thought.